The Hawker Typhoon was a British single-seat fighter and fighter bomber. It was initially designed as a medium to high altitude interceptor, and its main objective was to replace the aging Hawker Hurricane fighter. Twin projects were developed, with one fitting the Rolls-Royce Vulture engine and the other the Napier Sabre. Eventually, the massive Napier Sabre engine was fully adopted. The prototype flew for the first time on the 24th of February 1940, but several issues delayed its entry into service to September 1941. This was the start of a very rough first year, where further problems surfaced. The Napier Sabre engine had a bad relationship with cold weather, faulty valves and was prone to engine fires at start. The aircraft's performance was also subpar with mediocre climb rates and overall bad performance at higher altitudes. A considerable problem since its main role was to be a medium to high altitude interceptor. But the Napier engine wasn't the sole one responsible for the issues that plagued the design. An issue in the rear fuselage meant that several typhoons were lost after the tailplane broke. Also, the canopy had visibility issues and had a car door format, which made it a deadly trap in case the pilot had to leave the aircraft in a hurry. In addition, little carbon monoxide seeped into the cockpit, which forced pilots to wear an oxygen mask from engine start to shut down. These issues made the design unsurprisingly very unpopular among Royal Air Force pilots. Things looked bleak for the Hawker aircraft when, in late 1941, necessity saved it. A new German aircraft was causing issues in southern England. The Focke Wulf 190 was faster than any RAF fighter and was being used in hit and run strikes that were becoming more than a nuisance. Well, the German fighter was faster than almost all RAF fighters. The exception was the Typhoon. The British plane saw a change in purpose and started being used in low altitude interception, where most of its engine flaws were absent. In the period between mid-1942 and mid-43, several German fighters and bombers were shot down by typhoons during raids in southern England. These successes gave new momentum to the design that saw several positive changes like the introduction of a new bubble canopy that gave it better visibility or the solution to the structural problems that plagued it. But this wasn't the final considerable change in the lifespan of the typhoon. Starting in December 1942, the Typhoon was employed in 9 intruder missions in northern France. It also started using a bomb load of two 500 or 1,000 pound bombs. Later, in 1943, it became one of the first Allied aircraft to carry 8-wing mounted rockets. And so, its role changed again, now being used as a ground attack aircraft. In advance of the Normandy landings, typhoons were used with great success to knock out coastal radar stations, effectively blinding the Germans to what was to come. And so, it was during the Normandy landings, in the ensuing Falaise pocket battle, and until the liberation of Paris, that the British aircraft shone the most. During this period, typhoons belonging to the 2nd Tactical Air Force flew 6,500 missions, fired more than 38,000 rockets, and claimed hundreds of tanks and AA guns. The rocket load became a staple of the typhoon, and its effects were devastating, despite their lack of accuracy, estimated at as low as 5%. Its effects went beyond their 60-pound warhead. It had a dramatic effect on German morale, sometimes stopping entire offensives altogether. The aircraft saw action until the end of the war and was used with considerable success, becoming one of the best Allied ground attack airplanes. The Typhoon was the first British production aircraft to break the 400 mile per hour barrier in level flight. It was actually its excellent speed at a low level that saved the design. The ability to take 2,000 pounds in bombs or 8 60 pound rockets made it a very good ground attack airplane. This amount of payload was roughly the same as that of a fully dedicated bomber of only a few years prior. Its stability at high speed made it a very good gun platform, allowing its powerful armament of 420mm cannons to shine. Lieutenant Ken Trott recalled. You could come in on a target at 400 miles per hour and the thing was steady as a rock. Despite being designed as a high altitude interceptor, it never became good at that role due to its engine and aerodynamic limitations. 
Although it had some success while facing enemy fighters, the final ratio stood at 246 aerial victories to 500 typhoons shot down in Europe, a mediocre ratio. Despite most major issues being eventually corrected, structural failure claimed the lives of 23 pilots. The Typhoon only had two meaningful variants. The NF was a night fighter version and the FR a tactical reconnaissance and as only a small number were produced, we won't cover them. The Hawker Tempest is included in this list for clarity. The Mark 1A was the first variant to enter service. It had 12 303 caliber machine guns and was powered by the Sabre 2A engine that could develop 2180 horsepower. Only a few were built and were outshone by the four 20mm cannon versions. The Mark 1B was the definitive version. It replaced the machine guns for the more potent 20mm Hispano Mark II cannons of which it carried four. It was used with three variants of the Sabre engine. The Sabre 2A that could develop 2180 horsepower, the Sabre 2B rated at 2200 and later the Sabre 2C at 2260. Hawker Tempest Initially, the design study referred to the Hawker Tempest as being the Typhoon Mark II. However, there were major changes resulting in the name change to Tempest being considered a different aircraft. We won't look at those differences as it isn't the purpose of this video. Comparing the Typhoon with other pure fighters would be unfair as it wasn't that role that made it famous. The reference time for this comparison is mid-1943 as that was when the Typhoon started being adapted to use rockets and after the modifications that made it viable. We will compare it with the German focke Wolf FW190 F3 fighter-bomber variant. The Typhoon packed the more powerful engine and one of the most powerful ever of its type. We are not considering its issues at high altitude as we are focusing on its role as a ground attack aircraft. The British aircraft was slightly faster than the FW190. Another category with the Typhoon win. Its range could be extended with external fuel tanks, but the German plane had the same possibility. The focke Wolf F3 variant didn't carry rockets, only later versions did, toward the end of 1943. That possibility was partially what made the Typhoon such a good ground attack aircraft. Still, globally, the focke Wolf could take more payload. This variant of the German plane had to shed two 20mm cannons to be viable, making its armament inferior when compared with the British fighter. The pure fighter role didn't suit so well the Typhoon. It was inferior to the German focke Wolf in many aspects. But, as it can be seen, it was one of the best ground attack aircraft of the Second World War and was superior to the 190 in that adaptation. These are the ratings of the Typhoon Mark 1B as a ground attack aircraft and at the height of its lifespan. Twelfth March 1943. Lawrence Pinky Stark took off at 9.45 with Sergeant Leslie on patrol. Half an hour later, Hornchurch communicated that at least two enemy aircraft were flying east, 10 miles northeast of Calais. The pair of British Typhoons turned east in pursuit. Later, they were informed that the enemy had turned southwest and subsequently east again. This change made the Typhoon pilots quit the interception, but following a turn northwest, they identified four enemy machines behind. They turned left immediately and restarted the chase, catching them between Dunkirk and Mardik, and closing up on two FW-190s that were flying at about 500 feet. Lawrence opened fire at the leading aircraft and struck the fuselage and right wing, causing the German focke Wolf to erupt in flames and go down inverted. This small piece of history may look insignificant at first sight. But it was exactly this type of engagement that saved the Hawker Typhoon from early death and shows its ability to chase marauding focke Wolves. 
Sir Kenneth Adam was born in Berlin in 1921. Due to his Jewish ancestry, he fled to England in 1934 and later became one of only three German-born pilots to fly in the RAF ranks. The stakes were probably higher for these pilots as in case of capture they would be treated as traitors instead of prisoners of war. He became known as Heine the Tank Buster due to his exploits during Normandy landings and the Battle of the Falaise Camp. But it wasn't only due to his military successes that he became possibly the most known Typhoon pilot. After the war, he entered the movie industry working on famous titles like Ben-Hur, Doctor Strangelove and seven movies in the James Bond saga. He also won two Academy Awards in the category for Best Art Direction. From underwhelming fighter to excellent ground attack aircraft. That's how the lifespan of the Typhoon could be described. Such is the nature of war that things rarely turn out the way they were planned. The slow adaptation of the Typhoon to a new role depicts a good level of adaptability from the Royal Air Force and this was essential to the war effort. It's undeniable that Typhoons were a crucial piece before, during and after the Normandy landings, especially the rocket carrying units. It definitely earned a place in between the best ground attack aircraft of the war and occasionally the Hawker Typhoon has been called the first true fighter bomber. Ironically, the change in the role that saved its life earlier would mean its death, as there wasn't much need for ground attack aircraft after the war. An overwhelming majority of Typhoon units had become scrapped by 1946. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like, subscribing and pressing the notification button. It would help me a lot. Feel free to tell me what can be done better in the comments below. There will be plenty more videos to come.